So, are we on? It looks like it. Yep. Um, <laughs> hey, Keisha. How are you going, sis? Welcome hey, to uh, our, our very historic and very first uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander uh, diabetes webinar, I think it's called. Yep. Um, to start off with, Gudinglua Batiwa Darandara, uh, Nayana Bandira, Namuli Larakia, Garijari Biliba. So, uh, basically, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bandira, uh, and I'm a Larakia Garijari man. Um, as I mentioned, welcome to today's webinar talking about Diabetes Australia and our work with in, in engaging with Aboriginal uh, and Torres Strait Islander communities using the awesome design uh, from Sister Keisha. Um, before I introduce Keisha and we, we talk a bit about uh, her background and design, I'd like to acknowledge uh, all the traditional custodians of the lands on which we live, work and play, uh, and also acknowledge and pay my deepest respects to our elders past, present and emerging. I also want to acknowledge any First Nations mob on today's webinar. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, but righto, let's get on with it. Uh, we've only got a short amount of time. I want to firstly, I wanted to send a, a quick shout out to uh, a brother up in Queensland. He's up in Bowie. Uh, brother Don is uh, going through some very serious health issues, including diabetes at the moment. And I uh, wanted to send him some positive thoughts on his way. He, he texted me saying he couldn't be on today's uh, broadcast uh, because he is going through um, quite invasive health procedures, but brother, get well soon. Um, a quick background to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Diabetes uh, Engagement Space at Diabetes Australia uh, and, a, and a bit of our work to reduce the incidence of this uh, preventable and manageable condition in our mob. Bit of history, uh, first recorded case of diabetes in an Aboriginal person occurred uh, 135 years after colonisation and was in an Aboriginal man in Adelaide in 1923. The earliest detailed studies investigating the development of or the incidences of diabetes in our mob uh, was not undertaken until the early 1960s. So that's still quite a uh, lived experience for a lot of our mob. You think of our, our parents and grandparents. Um, the 1960s was was like yesterday. Unfortunately, the stats for diabetes in our mob are at crisis levels. Um, and just very quickly, um, to give you an idea of the scope of what we're trying to work with and then why it was important that uh, we engaged uh, Keisha and others to, to help us with uh, what we're trying to do. Uh, diabetes is one of the major contributors to the 10-year life gap expectancy uh, in between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal, uh, non-Indigenous Australians. Uh, our mob are more than three times as likely to have diabetes and are four times more likely to be hospitalised for diabetes complications than any other Australian. Unfortunately, Aboriginal women, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women are twice as likely to develop gestational diabetes. Uh, and, and there's evidence, and the saddest bit, there's evidence that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children aged between 10 and 14 are uh, eight times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes than their uh, non murray peers. Um, mortality rates are, are correspondingly high, average non Torres Strait Islander people six times more likely to die from diabetes, etc. And these numbers are rising. And we'll talk a little bit about later on about um, why the incidences of diabetes are so high uh, in our mob. Um, so Diabetes Australia is committed to, to uh, very much a, re a renewed focus on reducing these numbers in our, in our community by developing culturally appropriate education and engagement strategies for our mob. So when I was diagnosed in around 2014 in Toowoomba, um, type 2 diabetes, I embarked on a journey to try and find out what my condition was because I... You know, to me, it was like an old person's disease. It was, you know, why I had no symptoms, etc. But so the resources that were around aimed at Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people were uh, not effective. They 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 missed the mark uh, to to some extent, to a large extent actually. Um, so I started at Diabetes Australia in 
March, February, March 2019, so only, only 18 months ago. And one of the things we started to immediately do was to talk about um, how, how, why aren't our mob engaging? Um, you know, and, and there's a number of reasons for that, but certainly the resources were quite bland and didn't identify specifically uh, that they were for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. So one of the things we did was we recently went to the mar went to market and invited a number of First Nation artists to submit designs around the theme of telling the story of diabetes. Um, and we had some fantastic work submitted, but ultimately there was one standout, um, absolutely blew us away. And uh, that was a design from uh, Sister Keisha, who, who now lives in, in Brisbane. Good afternoon, sis. Hello, how are you going? Good, thank you. Look, we're both new to this, so yeah. forgive us. Um, um, much prefer to sit around having a yarn around a fire, but... Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll we'll try this this for the, for now. <laughs> um, so, a bit of background, sis. Uh, where what's what's your background? Who's your mob? Um, my mob, mob is Waini Kalkadu, so um, Mount Isa Golf area. Um, I was born and bred in Mount Isa, and um, moved to Mackay and Brizzy along the way. Um, and my background is, and I'm also Aboriginal Chinese as well. I'm graphic designer and digital artist. Cool. Um, we'll talk a little bit about, um, and, and look, I've got a surname of Lee, so there's, you know, we commonly refer to ourselves as China Origines, and, yep. uh, but I will talk a, bit, a little bit about um, some of that a little bit later on. Now, hopefully this works. Um, I'm going to share uh, your design, I hope. This one? Is that it? <laughs> Nelly? Oh. Can you see that? No. All right. No. There. Can you see that? <laughs> no, it didn't yet. work. All right. Hold on. There. This one. Thank you. So yeah. <laughs> to fine. everybody, um, uh, joining us today. This was the design that uh, we ultimately chose to be the brand of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander uh, diabetes marketing and education and awareness. And I just have a, a, a just a couple of quick questions, sis, around um, the brief was to tell the story of diabetes. So can you t t walk us through a little bit about your design and some of the iconography that you've chosen? Yeah, so with the process and coming on board and getting the initial brief and um, understanding the process that, you know, understanding the objectives that Diabetes Australia kind of wanted to achieve as well as um, really speaking to that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, audience as well. So the key messages I started with, with were particularly around having that positive journey, um, really making it a positive um, health journey to go on um, because we don't want to, you know, we want to break down those fears and myths that come with, I guess, getting health checks in general and getting, especially around diabetes, um, had definitely with the fear involved as, as well. Um, so looking at healthy communities as a whole and wanting to kind of achieve, move towards achieving achieving healthy communities and um, taking that those beginning steps on the health journey. So really talking about the health journey there and what steps are involved and um as well as connecting with people and even just starting the conversation as well. So um, a lot of the symbolism around the artwork is in, particularly in the main um, blue pathway is very much about the health journey. So um, when it comes up, the health journey um, was really important because a lot of the objectives around Diabetes Australia, the campaign was to get people just to start the health journey and, you know, start that healthy living. So. Um, a lot of the start of the path was about those fears, um, fatalisms and myths that definitely come with um, talking about diabetes, especially in communities and um, with a lot of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander breaking down those those fears and having that conversation even if with a doctor, healthcare worker or, you know, Diabetes Australia as well and then moving towards um, 
connecting and awareness and then moving towards treatment and um, having a healthy life because you can definitely have a healthy life um, with diabetes. Absolutely. One of the things that absolutely grabbed everybody from the start was the colours that you used. Um, yep. What was the inspiration behind those? Yeah, I just, um, I always like to what? use kind of positive kind of colours and diabetes Australia obviously with the colour blue is very um a known colour for that, your brand. So um, utilising those blue colours to indicate the health journey, I think that was really important for me. And using colours in that kind of positive and negative aspect as well. Well, not so much negative, but, you know, the, the, yeah. um, the health journey is really bright and complementary to the health journey with Diabetes Australia. And then I think the, the rest, um, the greds and the, and the yellows and oranges for me are very, um, I often use those colours, I think, probably because where I come from. <laughs> but um, also as well, it just gives that kind, that overall complementary to the um, to the health journey and outside of the, being outside of the health journey and being part of the health journey. Mm. And because uh, Aboriginal art has been used for uh, thousands of years to tell stories and uh, a lot of, Aboriginal people would identify uh, the icons that have been used. Um, and for us at Diabetes Australia, it was, a, it was a matter of those colours combined with the story that you're telling um, would be something that um, attracted people to come over and have a look. So, um, yeah, yeah we, we think that in, in, those, in, in those respects, the, your design absolutely smashed the brief um, <laughs> yeah, in many of those most in, in many of those um, uh, points, we had a little chat just before we came online, and that was a scary thing to start off with because neither of us knew what to do or how it, how it happened. But we're experts now. Yeah. Um, but but diabetes. What's your uh, where's diabetes sit with in your family? Yeah, well, I think a lot of. Aboriginal families and Torres Strait Islander families can attest to this kind of the same story, but um, I think we're, ha we're particularly having a conversation around if diabetes affected my family and I already kind of knew that it did. I knew that a lot of my aunties and uncles had diabetes. Um, probably that was the extent of my knowledge was that they just had it, but I contacted my dad when I was doing this artwork and I talked to him and I said, oh, who in our family has diabetes? Like, I need to, like, what's the go? And he's like, everyone has it. And it was just really shocking. Um, yeah. I knew he had it a little bit. Um, I knew he was seeing a dietitian and getting back on track, but I actually hadn't had a conversation since then about it. And so it was just really interesting um, to know that, wow, I actually am really affected and I actually am yeah. very high risk. Um, yeah, absolutely. Myself. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, there's data that suggests that not only Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, and there's some historical reasons for that, and we'll talk a bit about that in a minute, but um, certainly Asian, Polynesian uh, yeah. communities are at higher risk. So you and I being China originates. Yeah. You know. We've got um, yeah, oh, Absolutely. And yeah. so I was surprised to find out that because um, when I was diagnosed with with uh, my condition um, and as I mentioned I had no no symptoms I was working in the correction system at the time um, and uh, it wasn't until and, and and so I was given all the brochures and the leaflets and a cookbook and a plate that showed you know the different portions um, but it wasn't until a little bit later I, I ran into or was working with a, a diabetes educator or a credential diabetes educator cde um that it, it i found out it was probably my diabetes was developed in utero um so when my mum was pregnant with me um that that was when my diabetes uh was the gene or whatever it was 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 implanted in my system and then a number of years later, it, it was triggered, and, and not until 2014. So, um, there's a number of, or um, uh, we carry a number of risk factors, and in this COVID environment, etc., it was it was even even worse. Um, 
So we just wanted to um, talk to you a bit about what we're doing now uh, with your design. Um, the reason we wanted the design done was to develop our engagement and, and marketing campaigns. We know Aboriginal people are not coming to our big expos and to our... Um, we have to go to them. Um, and COVID stopped a lot of that. Uh, but we also know that uh, our mob, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, aren't engaging that effectively with their conditions um, because of the difficulties. Um, so with your with your design, we're looking at... Um, so you're doing some work around COVID now? Yeah. Um, working, working with Diabetes Australia? Yeah. Um, what's, what's that going to look like? Yeah, so that's really exciting. That's in the pipeline right now, um, working on it right now, um, back back on track. So um, doing the artwork around that as well, um, very much in complementary to the um, main artwork, um, Pathway to Health. So still kind of speaking to that artwork and really kind of sending the message home to get back on the health journey um, and the health pathway Um in particular with people who already have existing diabetes. So mm. making sure that um, with everything being so, I guess, um, unstable with COVID and having that disconnection and disengagement um, from both healthcare workers and just um, our community in general, um, mm. a lot of people can throw, you know, uh, <laughs> well, making it, but, you know, just getting back on track to make sure that, they're, you know, they're, they're taking the steps that help um go to a healthy life and yeah. get back on that journey. So, yeah, it's really good. And I think being able to have a particular artwork as well just to speak to that message as well and be able to kind of, I, I think, and like you said before, um, being Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, we have those stories. We, we understand, you know, we it just gives a different way to kind of say this is a safe space and this is like a conversation to have. And it's I think artwork is a really positive way of doing telling that story. Um, well, yeah. yeah, absolutely. We talked about, um, I don't know if uh, many of the viewers today have been to a big Murray event, a knockout. Um, we talked about Musgrove Park, yeah. uh, NAIDOC, uh, where you've got, you know, five to 7,000 Aboriginal people, all in different Aboriginal design uh, T-shirts, etc. Yeah. There was a question a little bit earlier about uh, T-shirts. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so... Right <laughs> we, we are looking at um, your design becoming the brand, if you like, yeah. um, and that was part of the brief where we would like uh, people in 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 a year's time to go, oh, that's diabetes mob. Um, yeah. I'll go over and have a yarn. But certainly um, looking at uh, taking the diabetes story. And one of the big things we, we wanted to do around uh, our diabetes engagement was actually demystify diabetes. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of fear, a lot of stigma around uh, diabetes. Um, so we're looking at uh, going out into the communities and and setting up stalls and just having those conversations with aunties, yeah. et cetera. Um, so your design will be very much a central part of all of that and yeah. again thank you very much for that um and look forward to uh developing some more so uh, there's there's lots of questions here i can't keep up with you you mob um yes t-shirts um the only way we were going to have um a design done was by a, a, a first nations artist um and we went out and um uh, had to go through, uh, had to develop a process. So we went through Supply Nation and uh, contacted a number of artists through them. Um, and then through word of mouth, we were fortunate enough to be uh, given Keisha's name and contacts. And, um, yeah, we were able to to develop that journey. And, and ultimately, Keisha will be helping us design um, some of our deadly um corporate wear and stuff bands. Yeah, i'm excited um, about that for sure <laughs> yeah yeah um so i just quickly dive this question thank you your mob um nailing it um and hopefully um no there's a link um but other than that um 
Uh, that's all I have for today. Um, we've gone nearly half an hour. If there's anything else that people want to, uh, for Keisha, send us. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry, brother, I'm on a phone call. Um, uh, send, send your questions through now and we'll try and answer them. Um, otherwise, Keisha, wanted to uh, thank you uh, for thank your... You your work on this, I uh, and and the organisation uh, absolutely loves what you've done and how we're going to utilise that to engage with our mob. Yep. Um, the statistics are that um, the, first, the first diagnosed case was in uh, 1923, certainly. The first uh, study, major study, was in 1960. Uh, but they're now talking that 40% of the adult population in, in regional and remote areas uh, is type 2 yep. uh, or has, has at least type 2 diabetes. We don't know the, the incidences of gestational diabetes in young um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women. Um, it is high, but we have some studies, et cetera, that have been done. Um, and the, the first step in us engaging with them is to have uh, resources that are appropriate to our community. So we're looking at the four languages, um, maybe next financial year, but Aboriginal English is one of them, yeah. where we have a more conversational yarn. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like when you go home and you're sitting around at a barbecue, family barbecue or something. Um, we'll keep it clean, but, um, yeah, have, have those conversations. Yeah, uh, and have those resources in that language. I mean, even just yeah. doing the artwork myself has even started the conversation with my own family, which is um, it just goes to show you how important just that gen that first conversation is to have with your family. And it just like people just don't want to shit. It's just the so interesting when talks about it. Like my own father. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's something that all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander families should be having these conversations. There's still a stigma around uh, going to hospital. There's a young, the youth have, there's a stigma around, um, you know, die, like I said, it's a lot of people consider an old person's disease. Yep. Uh, well, unfortunately it's not. Um, and if, and, and your design and our uh, engagement strategies will uh, are just starting unfortunately, but we will be looking at trying to reduce those rates, trying to get people aware. Um, I've said to Diabetes Australia and others that let's engage with the sisters, the daughters, the, the aunties yep. um, in our mob because they're going to growl. Yep. <laughs> you know, if, if they know and you're Don't not looking up, well, I'll growl you. Yep. Um, and and that's what we need because if it's, if it's not going to be if the message is, is uh, not going to be um, engaging enough from organisations, families, yeah. aunties, don't ever mess with the aunties, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, we want them on the case. Um, we want them to look at um, how how they manage their own, how they manage in the family. And then, look, food, you know, dietary um Diet is a huge part of diabetes. Um, I know up in Dormagy when I was there um, and fortunate enough to have visited uh, Dorm and, and Mount Isa a number of times. Yep. Um, but at Dormagy, if the, once the store closes, it's only the roadhouse. Yeah. And you've yeah. seen the food at the right. roadhouse. Yeah. Um, and uh, in Mount Isa, when you do have access to, to the various chain supermarkets, mm. Processed carbs are cheap, you know, white bread, white rice, um, bag of potatoes. They're, they're reasonably cheap and you can feed a mob yep. um, on them. So um, there's a whole lot of work that's got to go around all of that. A lot of people we need to partner with um, and community health organisations, Aboriginal health organisations and community groups, um, usually up in Mount Isa and others. Um, so thank you for being part of that journey. Thank you for letting me no be part <laughs> hey thank you for letting me be part of the journey oh no problem and look and and hope that this is a, a long uh, a longer 
uh, and more sustained journey. There's that design again for everyone um, viewing today. So it's an absolute gorgeous piece of, of art that um, we'll be using on uh, all of our marketing and branding exercises. So keep your eye out for those um, and hopefully we'll get some, um, I don't know about more of these broadcasts because a little bit thing, but um, we'll catch up with you again, sis. Uh, this is, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all good. So thank you everyone for watching today. Um, we've got five minutes to go, no questions? Awesome. Oh, I, think, uh, I think your own daughter has a question here. <laughs> no, for yeah. you. For yeah, me. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told her, don't, don't ask questions of me. You asked little uh, Keisha. So what did she say? Um, is there anything you discovered during the process about how young women are living, um, young women are living um, that we can do better with our own health? Um, which is actually really interesting because um, even in a more personal experience and particularly with young Aboriginal women, um, it's really prompted me, um, I guess me being a 32-year-old woman moving towards a family um, and thinking, and I have live a pretty healthy lifestyle. I still am at a very high-risk um, group being Aboriginal Chinese. So um, I think it's just prompted me to kind of, understand that there's different ways of getting diabetes and like you said breaking down those myths yeah. around um it being an old person's disease it's not it's um can very much happen in pregnancy so i've actually prompted um myself by going to see a dietitian and a nutritionist um yeah. and shockingly found out the biggest thing was that my blood sugar levels are constantly like um uh, up and down and i'm pretty healthy so i think it just goes to show um women have those conversations to each other and yeah. I think it's really important yeah. to kind of discuss that and just I think the first steps and it's hard to know um, I think the exact answers but um, yeah well, definitely targeting, targeting yeah. Um, younger generation as well I think yeah. that's really important because they're the future and they're the people who are going to break down a lot absolutely. of these barriers. Absolutely, absolutely correct. Uh, diabetes is quite a, a I, I tell people it's a sly disease you actually don't know that you've got the yeah. condition because nothing, there's no, uh, initially there's no physical sort of symptoms of it. So you just go along, you just do your thing. Um, but certainly need to look at um, healthier diets, uh, getting people a little bit more active, particularly the young people. Um, you know, alcohol and tobacco are, are major contributors to other uh, chronic conditions that impact then on um, um, our our other um, diabetes etc. So um, it, it's around you know I, I I worked in prisons for a long time and you talk to the the the, the boys and they and I'd say you got a plate of chips and gravy what are you doing you're diabetic yeah 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 no 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 what what did your blood say this morning oh, no, I don't test them anymore they're too high always too high brother you know um, yeah. so that that's all part of that having those conversations in our families and I'm, it's fantastic to hear that. Um, started a conversation in your family, but also yeah. that you started thinking about. I've been thinking about my diabetes every day for six years or whatever. Yeah. Um, I met an old an auntie here in Canberra, just down at one of the local shops, and I tell the story before where we got talking. She she uh, found out I worked at Diabetes Australia. Um, she said, "Oh yeah, I'm diabetic," and I said, "Well, I was just at, had had just been at the pharmacy." And I said, "So how's your medication?" She goes, "Well, no, 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 I don't take it." Well, why not? Too expensive? No, no. Uh, one of the medications says, and on the box it says to be taken with a meal, and she doesn't know when her next meal is coming from. Yeah. So she, she just chooses, and you go, auntie, you know. Another uncle that's from Northern Territory, but he lives down here, um, doesn't go to the diabetes clinic at the local. Uh, we only have one AMS in um, in Canberra because um, he's, he's got to rely on his nephew. Yeah. Uh, and, and if his nephew is available, does the car, uh, Marika, have petrol? <laughs> To yeah. get him out to Narrabunda. So, and in, in the end, he goes, Look, it's too hard. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, 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 all of these conversations, and certainly amongst young people, young women, um, uh, we desperately need to, to engage. We need to partner with as many people as possible. Brother Colin down in Diabetes Victoria, who runs Feltman, is an absolute 
um, legend in the game. Um, and But what we've also found um, is that a lot of our resources and a lot of our, our um, renewed or revised resourcing is good for not other non-English speaking mob. Yeah. Um, so people see that and go, oh, I'm going to have a look. Um, that's something I saw down at Diabetes Victoria's Health Expo. Um, a lot of called culturally and linguistically diverse mob. Um, yeah. But no, it was good. Um, so thank you again. Um, yeah, one o'clock. Um, <laughs> no, no other questions? Jenna, stop catching. <laughs> uh, um, so if there's anything, um, nothing else. Um, I think we've got a little bit of a Q&A coming off the website. I don't know. Um, I'll talk to comms about that. And um, in the meantime, thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, we will resume at another another date on another yeah. time. All right, then. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.